first, let me introduce myself. I'm Papan Wilson. I've served in the United States Air Force, and I'm also an Operation Desert Storm veteran. Today, I'm going to be discussing the value of hiring veterans. This topic is very important to me, as well as to our veterans. Now, we often hear the statement, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for serving. I would like for you to pay close attention to do these two words. They will come into play later in my talk and how we truly want you to see the meaning and action behind them. So what do we need to know? A bit about my time in the Air Force and my transition to the civilian sector. I was a medical technician in the Air Force and stationed at some incredible assignments. When I separated from the Air Force, I was able to obtain a job easily. Given that, I went straight into the medical field. My transition was smooth. I will always remember my first interview. I was sitting in front of the doctor, who I was going to be working with for the next few years. She looked at my resume, then she looked at me, looked down at my resume again, and then leaned forward and said, you are a medical technician in the United States Air Force. You're hired. Immediately, she knew the value that I was going to bring to her practice. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for majority of our veterans. Were you aware that Tennessee is ranked number four as far as having the highest population of veterans? The Department of Veterans estimate over 12 million veterans separated by 2045. We make up roughly about two to three percent of that number. One thing that I can say, as a country, we are very patriotic, but as employers, we are not vet friendly. I'm hoping this talk will help us move towards becoming more vet friendly. All veterans are aware that when we have to get out, when we get out of the service, we get, have to get adjusted to some of the things that we normally weren't used to paying, medical, dental, vision insurance, However, we are looking for specific criteria on areas in your company that will make us even stay or even apply at your company. Will you utilize our skill sets? Will the pay be equal, if not more, to what we were earning while serving? Also, will I have opportunities to grow and be promoted? These questions are very crucial to us. Did you know a recent study conducted by Vet Advisors and Syracuse University for military and veteran families revealed 43% of veterans leave their first civilian job within their first year, and 80% leave before the end of their second year. Now Chattanooga, how can we change that narrative? As companies pursue talent to match their values of discipline, teamwork, resilience, and commitment, they do look to veterans. However, veterans are often overlooked for civilian job opportunities because many of their skills don't easily translate into the corporate world. First, you need to understand their transition, which is very different from what a college graduate would go through. Most employers tend to hire college graduates because of their investment in higher learning, and some may even have done internships. Did you know that veterans that separate tend to have college degrees? Some of them do. All officers who separate have their bachelor's or even their master's. Furthermore, we have a special skill set that will allow us to hit the ground running within our new jobs. And for those veterans who did not obtain their college degree while serving, they tend to do so after they separate. Now, I have two friends who served and separated at the same time. Both of them had similar transition stories, but two very outcomes. Tech Sergeant Jim Malone served in the Army for 20 years and was hired within a month. During his first few months, Jim was finding himself quite bored and felt like an outsider. It was hard to connect and to understand why civilians perform differently. At his one-year mark, his director wanted to know why was Jim given his two weeks notice? He explained how things were very difficult when he first started 
And he stated that he didn't feel like he was serving a true purpose at that company. Captain Murray Williams served 20 years in the Air Force and was re hired within a month after she separated. During her first few months, she too struggled. However, her company had a veteran onboarding program that aligned her with a sponsor who was prior Air Force, then after three months appointed a mentor who was also a veteran. During the sponsor phase, she was able to discuss her struggles, which her sponsor was able to help her understand, the differences between the military and the civilian sector. She helped her translate those military skills to help her communicate better with her team and leadership. Under her mentor for the next 12 months, that mentor helped showcase her skills throughout the organization. As of today, she is thriving and helping new veterans within the company and their transition. Now, it's important for each employer to understand military transition, as well as how to identify a great candidate when you're hiring a veteran. By understanding the differences, you can help narrow the culture divide and retain a value employee. In order to narrow this divide, employers need to identify the different transitions and the different transition stressors. Structure, communication, camaraderie, and stress management. For the military, for structure, our missions and expectations are clearly defined. For communication, we are trained to compartmentalize our feelings and we do not question leadership. We speak when we are spoken to. For camaraderie, there's already a built-in network with strong connections starting as soon as basic training or boot camp. I'm still friends with some who, some of who I went through basic training with, as well as friends from my first military assignment. For stress management, we are expected to push through and complete the mission. We do not bring in outside factors, which can cause major delays in that mission. For in the military, failure is not an option. So for civilian sector, for structure, process and goals are defined with room for flexibility. For communication, candid conversations are encouraged. From camaraderie, orchestration, organization structures varies. You might be working a job with very little to no other interactions with others. For stress management, it is actually encouraged to help. In fact, in civilian sectors, if you're not asking for help on high level projects, that leadership team will be questioning like, is everything okay? Also volunteer opportunities in the civilian sector, it's actually encouraged. But in the military, volunteer assignments are never good. So we do not volunteer. Actually, we are volunteered to do the assignment. And I can see many veterans right now laughing and nodding their heads, yep. At the company I work for, I was able to create a strong onboarding pro program, which Captain Williams went through. That program aligns every new hired veteran a sponsor for three months, who served the same branch as well as the ra same rank, or we try to get it close enough to the same rank or equivalent to. Then, they're after the phase, they are actually aligned with a mentor who's either a veteran or a civilian for 12 months. The sponsor helps the new veteran with the transition part, and the mentor focuses on their career growth. Unlike Jim, his prior company did not have an onboarding program. He did inform me that if they did, he most likely would have still be there to this day. Also, it's important for us veterans to understand your company's mission. It's in our DNA to continue to serve and provide support. If we don't know what your mission is, we question what truly is our purpose there and how can we contribute to that? Let's also talk about the biases that veterans face. I know I did getting out. The most typical things I heard were, you're too strict. You're too structured. I don't know if you can think outside the box. Mm, you may not be able to relate or show empathy. And the number one bias that veterans who served in the combat role hear all the time. Oh, you might have PTSD. 
I'm here to tell you that majority of those biases are not true. Now, they may be some in some cases, but nine out of 10, they're not. We aren't strict, just discipline. We just wanna support our teams and our company in the highest level. We may seem structured, but it's because we know there's a deadline and we want the team to meet or even exceed the expectation. And we're constantly thinking outside the box because we are given assignments and mission and we're told complete this from A to Z without any instructions. So we have to think outside the box to get the mission completed. In the military, we already know the end goal will be accomplished. So we look for any outliers that may derail our progress. And lastly, were you aware that veterans who served in combat related roles, only 20% suffer from PTSD? In addition, most veterans with PTSD work in high positions and are able to complete work assignments exceeding their leader's expectations. PTSD triggers are very different from work-related issues and triggers. For those who know me know I am truly passionate to make sure that no veteran is homeless and can't provide a roof over their family's heads. That no veteran should ever struggle with hunger or to feed their families. And no veteran should ever struggle to find a job. So, as employers here in Chattanooga, as well as the nation, this is how you say thank you. Our veterans deserve to live the American dream. It's that very dream that we serve to protect unselfishly, and for some, it came at a sacrifice. So I leave you with this quote by Rumi, which I feel summarizes my talk with you. A candle never loses any of its light while lighting up another candle. And with that, I say thank you.